Hello viewers, welcome back to my YouTube channel 3D Parametric Solid Model Drawings. Today I am showing you how to animate the mechanical bench wise through dynamic simulation in Autodesk Inventor software. This assembly contains 10 part files. At first, I made 3 sub-assemblies for creating the animation and afterwards, these sub-assemblies will be inserted into the main assembly before going to the dynamic simulation environment. In its previous video, I told you how to make its parts and also told how to keep all the parts in the assembly by using the assembly constraints. If you want to see the complete modeling video tutorial of this model, so you can watch this video by visiting my YouTube channel, I will give the link of this video in the description. From there, you go and watch it. Okay, that's it. So let's start the tutorial. Now I am opening a new millimeter assembly file. Okay, that's it. Now my assembly design window is visible on your screen. First of all, I am inserting the base part. Right click in the assembly design window and select the place component command. Place the base part in this assembly by choosing the place grounded at origin option. Okay, this time my assembly is fully constrained. Here no need to give any mates over this part because this part is grounded. Now save the assembly with the name subassembly1. I am activating the place component command and insert the part job plate on here. Now I am activating the constraint command from the assembly design window. Okay. In the place constraint dialog box, the mate constraint will automatically be selected by default. Now I select the back face of job plate and the whole face of the base part and apply the mate constraint between them. Okay, that's it. Now I am selecting the flush mate from here and apply this mate between the side face of these two parts. Next, I am applying another flush mate between the top face of these two parts. Now see here my job plate has been successfully placed over the base part. Now I am inserting the screws from the inventor content center library files. Activate the place from the content center command. and select slotted pan head machine screw from the content center library. Ok. Now select the whole face of jaw plate for placing the screw. As soon as I selected the first hole here, Another screw is automatically installed in the second hole. Here I will change the screw size. Select the screw, right click and choose the change size option. Then I select the M5 from the thread description table. And I am selecting the length of this screw 25mm and click OK.
In the same way, I will change the size of the second screw. Okay, that's it. My first sub-assembly is completed here. So let's close the assembly. Let's create a second millimeter assembly file here. And insert the sliding jaw part in this assembly. Now insert the jaw plate. And fix the jaw plate over the whole face of the sliding jaw part by using the mate oblique flush constraints. In the same manner, I am fixing the two screws over the whole of the job plate from the inventor content center files that I had done in the previous subassembly. Now save the assembly with the name subassembly2. Okay, alright, now my jaw plate and screws are properly fixed on the sliding jaw part. Next, I am inserting the two copies of the slide key part in this assembly. Now activate the constraint tool from here and apply the mate constraint between the top face of slide key and the inner slot face of the sliding jaw part. Now select this one. and this one and fix another mate constraint here. Here I am selecting the flush mate option and apply this mate between the front face of sliding jaw and slide key part. Okay, that's it. In the same way, I am fixing the second slide. In the same manner, I am fixing the second slide key on the opposite side slot face of the sliding jaw part in the following way. Now rotate the model in a backward direction. Here I will insert two set screws over the hole. Activate the tool. And select slotted headless set screw from the list. Place the screw on this hole. Here I will change the size of this screw. I select the hash 8 from the thread description table and click OK.
Now you can see my slotted headless set screws are properly fixed on the base part. Okay, that's it. Now I am inserting the collar part. Select the whole axis of the collar and select the whole axis of the sliding jaw part, then apply the mate constraint between them. Now I am apply another mate constraint between the YZ plane of the collar and the YZ plane of sliding jaw part. Fix the flush mate between these two front faces of the components. Okay, that's it. My second sub assembly is completed here. So let's close the assembly. Let's create a third millimeter sub assembly here. And insert the vice screw part in this assembly. Now insert the handle here. Now I am applying the mate constraint between the cylindrical axis of the handle and the whole axis of the vice screw. Now I am applying another mate constraint between the YZ plane of the handle and XY plane of the vice screw. Now save the assembly with the name subassembly3. Now I am inserting the handle ball and pin part here. Select these two cylindrical axes of the parts and apply the mate constraint between them. Select these two center points of the parts and apply another mate constraint. Okay. Fix the angle mate between the YZ plane of the handle ball and exit plane of the handle rod. Now I am fixing the pin on the hole of the handle ball in the following way. In the same way, I am fixing the second copy of the handle ball and pin parts on the opposite side of the handle. Next, I am inserting the special key part here. Now activate the constraint command and apply the mate constraint between this whole axis of the key and cylindrical axis of the vice screw part. Okay, alright. Now I am applying another mate constraint between the YZ plane of the key and YZ plane of the, of the vice screw. 
Now drag the key like this and apply the mid constraint between the front face of the key and the back slot face of the vice screw. Okay, that's it. My third assembly has also been completed here. So let's close the assembly. Let's create another assembly file here. This will be my last assembly whose animation I am going to show you how you will run it in dynamic simulation. Okay, all right. Now save the assembly with the name Mechanical Benchwise Animation through Dynamic Simulation. Okay, all right. First of all, I am placing the first subassembly here. Next, I am inserting the second subassembly here. Okay, rotate the second subassembly in this position by using the free rotate component command. Now activate the constraint tool and apply the mate constraint between the top face of the first subassembly and the bottom face of the second subassembly. Now I am applying the flush mate between the exit plane of the first subassembly and the YZ plane of the second subassembly. Now see my second subassembly is sliding smoothly over the first subassembly. It is looking perfect. Next, I am inserting the third subassembly. Now I am applying the mate constraint between the cylindrical axis of the third subassembly and the whole axis of the second subassembly. Okay, now drag the third subassembly like this. I am applying the mate constraint between the front face of the second subassembly and back face of the third subassembly. And fix the mate offset distance value 0.1 millimeter. Okay, that's it. Here I am dragging the assembly. Okay, for checking this, see it is moving perfectly here.
Now I am applying another mid constraint between both jaw faces like this. And here I will suppress this mate before going to dynamic simulation so that vice animation starts from this position. Ok alright, the entire mates are applied over this assembly. Go on the environments tab and activate the dynamic simulation button from the begin panel. Now this is my dynamic simulation window. You can see it in the browser bar. Now see this is grounded assembly. See here these two subassemblies are shown under the mobile group section. See here these two joints are shown under the standard joints groups section. Number one is the prismatic joint and the second is revolution joint. Whatever we are given in mate assembly, it converts those mates into standard joints. So he starts seeing it here. So now I am applying the one screw joint between the whole edge of first subassembly and circular edge of the vice screw. Let's activate the insert joint button from here. Now see this is my insert joint dialog box. You can see many different types of joints are available here. I select the screw joint. See here the tool tip of the screw joint and how it works. In the component 1 selection section, at first I will select the whole edge of the subassembly 1. Ok. Next, in the component 2 selection section, I will select the circular edge of the vice screw. Ok. Now I will fix the value 3.5 mm in the pitch value section. And click OK to create the screw joint. Now see the screw joint will be displayed under the rolling joints section. If you want to edit this screw joint, it can be edited from here. Ok that's it, now I am selecting the revolution joint, right click and choose properties option. Click on the DOF1 tab and choose edit imposed motion button. Now click on the enable imposed motion option. In the velocity radio button, I will choose the constant value option instead of the input grapher. Now here I will fix the degree per second value 2700 degrees in this area. Because here I will be opening the bench wise of the jaw approximately 25.4 mm and click OK. Now I will click on the play simulation button to check it. Here you see my bench wise is not going in the right direction. What will I do for this? I will go to its revolution joint. And fill the value degree per second in minus. Ok that's it. And play the animation once again. Now see here it is going in the right direction. Alright.
Here I have already set the animation speed value 750. You can also increase or decrease its value if you want. From here the speed of animation is controlled. Ok now my benchwise assembly is ready to run for animation. Now click the play button to start the simulation process. Now see my bench wise is smoothly running on here. It is looking very nice. Ok, now select the construction mode for starting position of the assembly. Now rotate the assembly in the opposite direction. Ok, now I will animate the assembly once again. Now see, it is looking perfect. Okay, that's it. I hope you will enjoy this video. If you may like this video, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe on my YouTube channel. Please share this video with your friends and colleagues. Okay friends, goodbye.